Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Pink Fork here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Do you know what, I think we're going to ring Big V. Let's see what Big V's up to. My, my man in the dam. <laughs> Have a look. Let's have Big V on. How you doing? Alright. I'm good, how are you mate? I'm alright, Tommy. Just get comfy in my chair. How you been keeping, alright? Uh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just like I said, I'm just, um, you know, doing my work stuff, man. Online stuff, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. good because of the uh, COVID-19 sort of like, work-wise for me now, all online stuff. I've just pretty much just been doing that, mate. How you keeping? I'm alright, mate, I'm alright. Frank Bruno. Frank Bruno, yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You, what, what, what have you ever like, uh, Frank Bruno that you walked to in terms of, you know, as a boxer and a personality? Uh, I don't know really, I just thought, I just thought he, will, he was more likeable, isn't he? He's a love, love, lovable rascal, isn't he, Frank? I, I, I just warm to him more than I do Anthony Joshua. I think Frank wasn't reading off a script like Joshua. Yeah. So, that's why. And Frank didn't have it all his own way, did he? He was matched hard. No, he didn't. No, I think, um, like you said, I think everything that, obviously, Frank had in terms of, you know, interviews and whatever, he was just, a I don't know, just a quiet man, wasn't he? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think he was just a quiet man, There's no, uh, there were no Twitter though in them days, was there? No, it wasn't. So, so Frank right, Bruno's the answer to that. Yeah, alright, sweet mate. Question two. How, can you, how would you uh, see AJ Barron against fighters in the 70s and, and 90s? And who would he have beaten and who would he have um, lost to? 70s and the 90s, you mean the golden eras? Uh, so you're calling the 80s the lost generation then, are you? Yeah. Right, well let's back up to the 70s. Would he beat Joe Frazier? A Pete what? Joe Frazier takes him apart. Well, in terms of the weight though, mate, do you think Joe would have struggled? Because obviously jo um, Josh was 18 stone plus, didn't he? Yeah, Joe was 14 <laughs> stone, wasn't he? Yeah. Joe Fraser, what are you under a ninety-nine pound when he fought Ali at Madison Square Garden, March the eighth, seventy-one? He might have been one of nineteen or two oh six. He was hovering around cruiserweight. He'd be a cruiserweight now, and so would Ali. But as regards ability, I think he'd take it. Joe takes him apart. He sets about him. Sets about him. Gets inside him and beats him. Ali beats him. Ernie, Fra Ernie Shavers knocks him out because he's got a glass chin. George yeah. Foreman knocks him out. Big Ron Lyle knocks him out. Uh, Larry Holmes knocks him out. Uh, Jerry Cooney knocks him out. All them guys knock him out. And then you go to the 90s. Riddick Bowe beats him. Lennox beats him. Holyfield beats him. And Mike Tyson in the 90s beats him. Yeah, I agree with that actually. Tommy yeah. Morrison knocks him out. Yeah. Bert Cooper knocks him out. So. How about the guy that uh, Tyson first for the title? Um, that Trevor. Uh, Trevor Burbick. Trevor yeah. Burbick were an 80s guy, wasn't he? But you might have got him at end at 70s, but he probably loses to Joshua. Yeah. Alright, mate. Question three. Uh, do you think Fury. Do I think what? So, uh, I'll repeat the question, sir. Do you think Fury is playing too much on mental health thing with the general public and in, and in interviews? And do you see him being a 
mental health saviour for the public in years to come? Uh, well, I personally didn't believe all that mental health thing, and I never believed it, but each to their own, isn't it? You don't know what's going on in another person's mind. But I never believed it. But and we don't know, do we? But what I will say is, if Tyson's asked a question, he's going to have to answer it. Now, every time he's, 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 he's asked a question in an interview, he's usually asked about that, isn't he? But it seems to me that he's in a good place now, and, and he's, he's moved on from all that, and he's training all the time, and he's stronger mentally, so that's good, isn't it? But personally, I never bought into all that. So, for example, so when you see him with, like, you know, let's say, like, fans, for example, that have actually genuinely struggled with mental health, and then you just see him, like, sort of cluster around on YouTube and, you know, you meeting them and stuff and, you know, getting them on video and sort of asking them questions about their mental health state and all this, do you think that's genuine, I think, or do you think he's just a ploy? I think, well, I think, well, I think he's uh, showing concern, isn't he? But I can only go on my experiences with Tyson when. After he won world title, I, I I seen him quite several times at Peter Fury's gym, and he always looked all right to me. But you never know what people have got inside him, do you? So well, who knows? But I never I never really bought into all that. No, I didn't buy into it, and a lot of people didn't. But if he did have it, I'm glad he's over it, and I wish him well. So, so for example, then, like, like you said, if he turns up, like you know, he's recording himself, or someone's recording with these fans, so that genuinely, like you know. Something mental health. In my opinion, I just think why do you need to record all that stuff? Do you know what I mean? If you truly do it from the heart, you don't need a pat on the back for you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit like, for example, the seven million from uh, that, that you know seven million charity, whatever it was. Obviously, that went down to the press and stuff, and obviously you got a bit of a pat on the back. But obviously, when he was pressed for questions, he didn't know how to answer. Do you know what I mean? So for me, I just think if you're going to do that stuff. Why do you record? Why do you need to make a show of it? Do you know what I mean? Just do it because you want to. Yeah. You know? So, and yeah, that's my uh, question for. Um, what direction after the Wilder Fury trilogy do you see Wilder going? Uh, I just see him picking up paydays. Yeah. And earning money, that's all, because he's won world title now. It's just a case of picking up paydays till he's about 40. Is that how many uh, kids he's got? Nine kids. Say that again, mate. Is that how many kids he's got? Nine kids. Something like that. Yeah, he's got, he's got loads of kids, man. No wonder he looked. No wonder he looked tired. No one. No wonder he looked tired in the uh, Fury fight. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, mate. And, and I just think after that, I think yeah, he'll be there's been a day for Wilder that there's lots of paydays out there. I think for him now, there's lots. Yeah. He wants to. How can I put it? Obviously, if he's, obviously if he's used to getting like twenties and twenty-five million per fight, you know what I mean. And obviously now, after Fury, he's got to go back to probably earning five million a fight, four, three million a fight, whatever. So I just think he has to think he's going to just be going to pay days from now on until he retires. I think I don't think he's going to fight Joshua ever. I don't think that's going to happen. So. Mm. Interesting. Uh, uh, I think he'll just collect paydays. Why don't you? I think Fury beats him in rematch, unless he gets a lucky punch in. Uh, but I think he's just going to collect paydays. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. Um, question, question five, mate. In your opinion, what what do area level slash stroke English level fighters need to get to get big, uh, big paydays? Need to get to get big paydays. Opinion, you've got to get yourself out there, haven't you? Be a little bit controversial, but not overload it too much. If you look at the David Allen situation, he's got his son out there, he goes to every show, does every interview, does every selfie. He's put his time in, so he's reaping the rewards. But on the downside, he's up, he's up till early hours at morning on social media, so he's not going to be getting up for a run in the morning, is he? So, on the downside, his fitness suffered. 
Although he's got talent, but I don't think he's maximised it to the best of his ability because he's a tough kid and he can punch. Uh, so I think you've got to just be careful how you play it uh, on social media because you could end up like Anthony Fowler, who's tried it himself, but he's tried to force it too much and people don't like him, do they? Yeah, he wouldn't have earned as much money. He wouldn't have earned as much money, but he'd have been ready now to be let off the lease at 25 fights and undefeated. Because when he left Dennis's, he was undefeated in seven fights, but Dennis let him go because he wouldn't train. Now, if you're paying somebody a wage every week and their job is to train, and they're not training and they're fat as a pig sat in the house all day, why should Dennis pay him? Yeah, yeah. He'll warn and warn and warn, and eventually he will let go. He'll be saying he can't fight, but if you if you're not putting the time in, Dennis won't. He'll just let you go. He employs eighty people, so if you're gonna mess about, you're wasting his time, aren't you? Yeah. Plus yeah. another thing, if you're getting paid X amount to fight, and you're getting a wage every week, and then you're only doing five, six tickets and there's an opponent to pay, you're becoming a drain on the finances. So work it out, seven fights, probably 45 grand in purses, and you were there a few years on X amount a week. So Dennis has probably got about 100 grand tied up in him and he's not going to the gym. So what would you do if that were your money? Would you let him go? Yeah, you right. would, would you? So Dennis let him go, and since Dennis let him go, right, he's lost what five? To, he's won 18 times on the out of 25, right? He's lost five, drawn two. But has he won a belt? No. He's never won a belt, has he? Right. He's just fought David Price, lost every round, didn't he? Yeah. Right. So would it a good decision by Dennis to let him go because he's not won anything, has he? No, he hasn't. Boxing's a decision. Why should you pay somebody a wage to go to gym when they're not going to go and then try and, and, and encourage them to promote themselves a little bit to sell tickets like Ross Birkinshaw were doing? Ross went to the gym and he sold tickets and he fought and he won belts. Dave Allen didn't go to the gym, he didn't sell tickets and he didn't win any belts. And he hadn't won any belts since he's left. So as a business decision and you break it down, because I know how Dennis's mind works. Because obviously I've been with him for 62 months. So Dennis will have broke it down and have weighed it up. The, the pluses and the minuses and he would have gone. He's not going to gym. I don't think he's going to maximise his talent. Fat as a pig, sat in house all day, Michelin man. There you go. You're going to let him go, aren't you? And like I said, he's, got, he, he's gone where he's gone. He's what's he had? Nine, ten managers? Nine, ten, sorry, nine, ten trainers? Is it the trainer's fault or is it David Allen's fault? Has he wasted his talent? Yeah, he has lack of dedication, isn't it? If you've had nine or ten trainers, is it the trainer or the fighter? Fighter. Has the fighter won a belt yet? No. But why do they keep putting him out there? Because that's how boxing's going. He's a funny, he's likeable. He is likeable, he's a lovely kid. He's funny, he's likeable. He'll get to go on shows because everybody knows him, but when he goes out at arena to fight in the middle of the ring, everybody goes, oh, it's Dave Allen on now. Nobody takes him serious, do they? <laughs> no, am I right? You're right, right, you're right, yeah. David, I want to tell you the truth. Nobody takes it seriously. Oh, Dave's on, oh, this will be funny. And they want him to win because it's become like a novelty act, hasn't it? But if you say anything, Porky, you're a hater! Porky, you're a hater! Listen, I've backed more money on Dave Allen fights than anybody. I've won some and I've lost some. But what I want him to do well, but for him to be took serious, he's got to knuckle down, hasn't he? What do you, what do you think about, um, you know, when he got sort of like he was investigating money for, um, for what, what was it now? That was it, for taking a dive. Do, do you, obviously, could you know Dave personally? Do you think, could you see him doing that? I don't know, I don't know what goes on in his head, I don't know, I very much doubt it, I very much doubt that. Uh, if they've had a bet on the side to knock somebody out, 
in a round, that's not taking a dive, is it? You're backing yourself to knock somebody out, isn't it? Do you mean carrying the guy? Yeah, exactly, carrying the guy. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> it's an hard one, isn't it? I don't see him taking a dive. Uh, could he carry him to the third and knock him out with third round? I don't know. I, I wouldn't have thought he'd be daft enough to go put a bet on himself to win in a certain round. But who knows? I mean, but like I said in, in most of my videos, who cares? Uh, do I think he get, feels embarrassed? I think he feel, probably feels embarrassed about going up to a casino in Sheffield and spending it all in his suit and coming back partless. I think he probably feels more embarrassed about that than anything else. Uh, I don't know. He likes a bet, doesn't he, David? He likes a bet, so I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't know what goes through his head. He could turn up for a fight and he could knock... A, a top 20 guy out in Wales. Yeah. One day, another day he could turn up for a fight and you don't know what you're going to get. Is the Alex Higgins of boxing. You just don't know what you're going to get with him, do you? I mean, look what he did to Lucas Brown, a former world champion, and Nick Webb, who were not favourite. He iced paired them. But yeah, yeah. David Price fight, he just didn't look right, did he? And I had money on him to beat David Price as well. So he just didn't, he didn't look right, so I don't know what goes through his head, but I wish him well. Also, as well, um, another question. The um, AJ and Miller um, books are off footage. Why, why Sky have not released that yet? And they keep showing like little snippets on it on YouTube. Little snippets of what? Hey, German. I don't know, probably because they might be saving it for when they do fight down line. I don't think so, mate. You know what I think? I think there was stuff on that um, that show that obviously that wasn't uh, very friendly in terms of reviewing. I think, obviously, I think with AJ, I think his, his mask came off, I think, with that. Yeah. I don't think Sky, I don't think Sky want to uh, reveal anything about that. Well, do you mean Joshua's mask slipped? Oh God, I can't imagine his yeah. mask slipping. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, yeah, because I was watching actually another channel actually, an American channel, they were talking about it, and that was like, they did a video on why, you know, Sky hasn't re um, released it yet, and they keep showing little snippets of it, and there, there comes the conclusion that it was because uh, Joshua's mask came off, that's why. In terms of his, you know, his persona and stuff, it wasn't the media, but he died that he is, you know? I don't know. Yeah. We don't know, but you never know, do you? No, exactly, exactly. I don't think that will come out, though, mate. Hey? I don't think that gloves are off will ever be uh, re released. No. Um, okay, so back to another question. Um, do you think Tyson Fury, Mick Hennessy settlement to a million for a fair amount? I think what? The, um, the Tyson Fury, Mick Hennessy settlement, you know the court settlement? Yeah. Do you think he was a fair amount on Mick's part? <clears throat> well, I mean, you've got to look at it like this, right? Mick Hennessy signed him, didn't he? Yeah. From debut. He took him to English. Commonwealth, Irish, British, European, and four world titles and the Ring Magazine belt, 25 and 0, and then they parted company, yeah? Yeah. So Mick Hennessy, down the line, would have had a lot more than that. So do I think it were a good settlement? Mick obviously accepted out of court, so he were happy with, to get something. But if they'd stayed together, he would have had that times 20. So I think it's a sad case, and I think all Mick's probably got back is what he had invested in him. I don't think he's made anything. I think it's a lesson learned for Mick. But the good thing is, on Mick Hennessy's part, is Mick Hennessy can go and unearth talent, can't he? Yeah. 
Tyson Fury, Yui Fury, Carl Frotch, Darren Barker, Chris Eubank, all turned pro, Chris Eubank Jr. sorry, all turned pro with Mick Hennessy. So Mick Hennessy knows what he's doing, doesn't he? So he will unearth somebody that's good soon. It's just a case of Mick finding them because he's the best guy out there that finds the talent that's not in the in, in the Olympic team. If you, does that sound right? Yeah, thanks, thanks. Because then lads don't all didn't go to Olympics, did they? No. So. Also, as well, do you think, obviously, when Tyson Fury goes to sleep at night, do you, do you think everything's about the situation with him? Do you ever like thinks, oh, that could have been better, I could have done this, could have done that? Do you ever think anything thinks that? Do, do I think that when Tyson Fury puts his head down on his pillow at night, he thinks about Mick Hennessy? Yeah, in terms of the situation. If, he, okay. if he's got any compassion inside him, or he's this nice guy that he tells everybody he is, I think he will. If he doesn't think about Mick Hennessy when he puts his head down on his pillow at night, he's not the person I think he is. But I, I'd have thought that Tyson will think he wishes it had worked better. But it's one of them things, isn't it? He'd have wished it had worked out better, I think, between him and me. That's all I can say. That's a bit sitting on the fence for me, isn't it? Because obviously there'll be stuff that I don't know what's going on, but yeah. this is how I look at it. Carl Froch and Mick parted, didn't they? Yeah. There's two sides, isn't there, to it all? So, But they went on a great run together, didn't they, Carl Froch and Mick? And yeah, they did. They, they won. They won uh, you know, they, they went and won everything, didn't they, together? And then they fell out in Super Six. But I thought Mick did a good job for Carl. But Carl was probably more bothered about the commercial aspects of boxing and earning a lot of money outside of boxing. You know, we had people in his ear, probably Eddie Earn, telling him you should be a bigger draw than what you are for who you've fought and that. And I, and I can see where Eddie Earn's coming from. But Mick Hennessy's boxing, isn't he? He's not one of them guys that's going to get you an appearance in Hello Magazine, is he? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, hope, I hope it all works out for Tyson Fury, because I'm a fan of his. And I hope that, well, it has worked out for Carl Froch, hasn't it? Because he's a multi-millionaire and he owns half of Nottingham. <laughs> so, it's worked out for them all, hasn't it? Mick's not short of a few quid anyway. Do I see what? Can you see the NBA life movement, the cult, um, and like the casuals, like their opinions, um, stopping when Joshua retired, so then like the yeah. opinions that they have. I see 90% of them disappearing back to an island called Gimpville. <laughs> Gimpville Island, that's where they live, innit? Matt the Casual. Yeah, 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 that was uh, From West Yorkshire, Wakefield, Leeds area. Lives in Essex now. Yeah, interesting interview that was. What a sellout, eh? Yeah, that's bad, that is it. Did you like, what did you, did you agree with a lot of things he said? Say that again, Did you agree with a lot that Matt the Casual said? You're not balls. No, do you think I should have him on again? Mate, it's your channel, man, but... <laughs> Do you think that? Do you think? Do you think you were uh, out of touch with reality, Big V? One thousand percent, mate. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. He was bad. He was bad. Mm. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, mate. Um, I've got another question for you anyway. Um, if Tommy Frank becomes IBO world champion, would he fight any of the other champions in his way? He called out. A lot of it's going to depend on this virus, isn't it? A lot's going to depend on this virus, whether we can fly people in from another country. That's one option. Because if you fly people in from another country, you've got to sort them out somewhere to stay after picking them up, somewhere to take them to eat. They've got to be chaperoned for five days while they're here or four days. 
They've got to be paid a bit extra because they're coming from abroad, because they're coming to another country. So there's all that to take into consideration. If Tom, and then Tommy's got to win the bell. If he wins the bell, Dennis is going to want to probably get some of his investment back, isn't he? Yeah. So that'll mean defending the belt in Sheffield, but if you can only put 500 people in, in an arena in Sheffield because of this virus, in a 2,500 seater arena, how are you going to get your money back? So a lot of it's going to be down to virus, that's what I think. But say for example, if there wasn't none of this virus, say if the virus didn't exist, how do you think it would plan out in terms of, obviously, Tommy won the IBO World Championship, and, you know, if obviously other fighters like the IBS champion and the WBA champion, all the other, obviously all the governing bodies, their champions will be coming on that Tommy. Do you think he'd expect the fight if we did have all these pandemics and what Dennis uh, I think Dennis said just accept that you've got to put a show on with 500 there. That's yeah. right. But would it make much difference to shows? No, I don't think so, because they're not selling much more than that anyway at shows leading up to it. Well, we're doing a thousand tickets, if that. So if they chop a two and a half thousand arena down to 500. It won't make much difference anyway. You'd have to put less fights on. You'd have to juggle up numbers about one. Well, the people might have to fight for less. I don't know. It's something that Steve Crump and Dennis will have to decide, won't they, on the night? But I hope this virus goes away and that Tommy gets his world title fight and Dennis gets his seventh world champion. That's what I hope. Yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. going to see, aren't we? We're going to see. Yeah. We're going to see. But I wish Tommy Frank all the best. Tommy, how are you? <laughs> He's all right, Tommy Frank. Hey, up, Porky Ross. Hey, up, Dennis. Hey, up, Steve. I just listened to Glyn, Steve, and Dennis. Me, Porky Ross. <laughs> I just do what they say because I'm a good little boy. I'm only messing with you, Tommy. You're welcome on the channel anytime, Tommy Frank. I've got your number here. You've unblocked me just like Liam Cameron have. You know what Porky says makes sense. Porky knows best. Chris Medley, shout out to Chris Medley. Hope you're well, Chris. You're welcome on any time. Top trainer. Not in every interview. Like Mick Whale and Mark Timms. They don't do interviews, them. Like some trainers. They're old school. Do you, um, about the Liam Cameron situation, do you see a Liam Cameron never coming back to boxing? I think Liam will come back. He's got uh, 22 months left on his ban. I think he'll come back, but he's uh, he's walking about 16 and a half stone at the moment. Have you waited now, is he? Uh, so he's got five stone to lose, but he's training with Ross the Boss. Hey, old Porky Ross, I'm training Liam Cameron now. We've got 70 pounds to lose off him. <laughs> I'm only joking, Ross. Hope you're well. <laughs> do you see um obviously could you have, what do you reckon white um uh, Liam will come back to? Do I think what? What white do you think Liam will come back to? I think he'll come back at middleweight because that's where he, 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 he that's his best weight in it, Liam Cameron, middleweight. He's a six foot one, is he six one or six foot? Six foot, six foot one, middleweight, and he's a big puncher. So, if he comes back at any higher weight than that, he's going to give all his advantages away, isn't he? Because when he hits you, he hurts you, Liam. So, and we've seen that in his fights. Yeah. I mean, I felt sorry for Sheedy when he fought him, because when I looked at him in the ring, Sheedy always looks in fantastic condition. He's always ripped and looks well, but Sheedy's a light middle, and Liam were a boiled down super middle. And it weren't even when they got it ring. One of them were up here, Liam, and he just he just towered above Sheedy, and he just he just went through him like a knife through butter. But Sheedy got stuck in, and I like Sheedy; he's a likable kid. But it turned into a bit of a mismatch, really, in size and power, because Sheedy is a light middleweight. That's my opinion. But if Liam can do middleweight and he comes back, he'll be a force. 
if he gets the, into a routine and dedicates himself, because he's got a lot of talent. Liam's an ABA champion, by the way, don't forget. So it's not like he's a mug. 